Hi everyone, I'm Nicole, Stomach Stitch. Today is November 26th, 2023, and this is floss tube number 18. So as of today, I have stitched 231,285 stitches since I started stitching in 2020. And oh, it's been a long, long time since I filmed my last video. And since then, I have stitched 26,987 stitches. Uh, so you're in for a lot of stitching progress today. Um, I know it's been like, I don't know, since August or something since I filmed. Um, and I just kind of fell out of the routine for a while. I wasn't, um, wasn't in the mood to film a video. I was really in the mood to just do my cross stitching and spend time with, um, friends and family and yeah. Uh, I have been very busy at work, so it just didn't seem like a time that I wanted to also spend filming or even designing patterns. I haven't done that at all lately either. Um, so I didn't, um, but I have a little bit of time right now, so I thought I would try to give you as comprehensive of an update as possible on my stitching progress since way back when. <laughs> so I will hop right into it with finishes. Um, since it's been a while, I have quite a few finishes. Um, the first one that I talked about last time and was in my last video, which was a stitch with me, is um, Elegant Lace by Works by ABC, which I finally finished. Um, and so here's what that looks like. Oh, there's a nice rainbow reflection <laughs> happening. That's funny. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a closer look. So it has some really cool details that honestly close up there are hard to see, but um, to see the effect of, but far away I think it looks really pretty. Um, unfortunately I don't really have anything to hold it up in front of, so it's kind of got a funny glare through it. Um, this piece I started, let's see, so I started it um, back in 2022. I finished it on September 17th. Um, it is 19,369 stitches, so it's quite large. Um, And I did it with the DMC Floch. So this is uh, B5200 on a Zweigart Sahara linen, which I absolutely love the color of. I haven't framed this yet. Um, oh, uh, so this is 36 count. I did it one over two. Um, I haven't found the right frame for it yet. And it's like a little over 10 by 10. Maybe it's like 11 by 11. Um, I think I want to put it in a white frame that just seems like the right thing to do but I I just haven't found the right one yet so it's just sitting in my closet with all my cross stitching supplies and a whole bunch of other finishes that I also haven't fully finished yet. I'm a little behind on fully finishing um because I, I don't really have the right frames for them. And every time I go frame shopping, or like every time, I guess not really frame shopping, every time I'm at Michael's, I don't have them with me. And also it's a really high barrier to get me to go look at frames um, for things because it's very overwhelming. And also frames are so expensive sometimes. So anyway, that was my first finish. Um, the next finish I have, um, I'm calling Yellow Beetle. I'm not sure if that's the actual name. Yellow Beetle by Crystal Feather Crafts. Um, I thought this one was very cute. Um, it's really small. I really liked the colors. Um, yeah, I have a kind of a funny cut <laughs> of fabric for it, but I liked how this one turns out. Turned out. I think I'm gonna finish it in a frame because it's really long, so it doesn't really. It looks kind of funny in a hoop because there's so much extra space on these sides just to fit the antenna in and the top of the hoop. 
Um, so yeah, probably we'll do a frame here. This pattern was only 1,479 stitches, and I did it on 25 count Lugana even weave, just white even weave, um, one over one, um, so that it would be nice and small. This took me about eight days to stitch up. I started it back on August 31st and finished it on September 12th. So yeah, I really like how this one turned out and I want to get it into a frame so that I can display it, but I just haven't gotten there yet. The next finish is a pattern that I have stitched quite a few times now. Um, this pattern is called um, Schnauzer by Hoop Dreams Studios. Um, it's a little schnauzer portrait. Um, sorry, gotta hold it in front of my face or something so that it focuses. Um, and then I backstitched my dog's name under it. So, um, Sion is a dog I grew up with and, um, he passed away a few years ago. So I already stitched a couple of these, like for my parents and my sister. Um, but I hadn't stitched one for myself and, um, I had had it on my list of things to do for a while, so I finally got around to it. Um, I also did it one over one on 25 count Lugana so that it would fit in this little two by three frame perfectly. I love how it turned out. I think the size is perfect. Um, and I keep it up on my shelves above my desk. So I really like how this one turned out. It was only 1,439 stitches, so another small one. It took me five days to finish it. Um, I started it on September 13th and finished it on September 21st. So yeah, um, that one just hangs out on my shelves above my desk. That one's actually fully finished. Um, okay, and then after that, we have a pattern called Mushroom Food. Um, this is a pattern from um, Noctiflora Designs. Um, they have amazing designs. Uh, a lot of their patterns are super cool and their colors are always so like poppy, um, but they look really good. Um, and this pattern I got from the, um, oh, what was it called? It's like the, the Stitchers Collective Earth Day pack that they did. Um, so I've had it for a bit. Um, this was like one of those things where they had like 20 so or so designers uh, donate their designs and then you donated money to different organizations to uh, get all of the patterns sent to you. So this was one of the ones that I really liked from it. I omitted um, the writing. It actually does say mushroom food at the bottom maybe. I can't remember. Um, and I trimmed down some of the leaves around it so that it was kind of more of a standalone. I don't I just generally don't like putting words on my cross stitching. Um, it's just not my style. Of course I just showed you one that did have words on it for my dog but that's really the exception. Um, and I have modified several patterns now to exclude words because I just don't really like it. Um, and I think it's not as Typically you can get around it, so um, if you yeah, don't mind retarding a little bit, it's pretty easy to do. And this piece was another nice small one. This one was uh, 1,537 stitches. I again did it on Lugana White Even Weave 25 count 1 over 1. I really like that um, look for a lot of these pieces that I want to turn out nice and small. Um, 1 over 1 on 25 count is like a really, it's a sweet spot for me. Um, and then this one took me six days from September 22nd to September 28th. So I was doing a lot of smalls in September and I touched a lot of projects in September as well. Alrighty, so that is four finishes so far, three more to go. Um, the next one is a fully finish. Um, this is mini art irisin, iris, irisin. Um, I don't actually know how to say that from the stitch patterns. Um, it is just a like simple, let me see if I can get it to focus and not have too much glare. That seems all right. Um, so this is one of the stitch patterns, mini art patterns that is based off of 
a Van Gogh painting called Harrison. Um, this is 1,092 stitches. Um, I do these ones on 28 count, but I do it over two, so it's, it's effectively 14 count. Um, I do it with the called for DMC, and I do three over two full cross. Um, and I have just standardized that for all of my mini art projects. I do them the same, same fabric, um, or like same count of fabric, same uh, number of strands. Um, this one took me six, no, 10 days. I always find that even though these are pretty small, for some reason they take me longer than stitching um, with two strands on 18 count or one strand on 25 count would take me. Um, I think it's because I get really caught up with making sure that the three strands don't turn out like super twisted. And so I'm kind of like spending a lot of time making sure my stitches are laying nicely. Um, so it slows me down. So 10 days, uh, September 29th to October 11th. Um, and this is just a two by three frame from Michaels. Um, you get them in like four packs and they come in black and white, but also like silver and gold. Um, I think the black and white looks really nice for these pieces. And every time I finish one, I just try it out in both colors and see which one I think it looks best in. You can see over here, I have finally hung up my mini art, um, gallery that I've started. Um, this is not the finished size. I have a couple more that are finished that aren't up yet and also many more on my um, to be stitched list. So I think probably like upwards of 20. So um, one day I'll have a really big art gallery, but not yet. Um, yeah, so that's all for that one. And then another addition to a different kind of like set that I'm working on. So should I go a couple steps back? I have some like big plans for a couple of like sets of cross stitch patterns that I want to display together. One of those is the mini art pieces um, that I want to have like kind of hung up in a little mini gallery wall. The other one is a series of butterfly patterns that I'm finishing in hoops um, that I want to kind of arrange into a, a gallery as well. Um, kind of like taking inspiration from the, um, I don't actually know what it's called, like the people who like have actual real butterflies and moths that are like pinned up for display and they have like these big display cases, kind of like taking some inspiration from that, um, but all cross stitch. And so I've actually also started hanging that one up. You can't see it in this frame, but I'll show you a picture later. I spent a good amount of time, um, maybe like a month or so ago, trying to hang up some more of my cross stitch pieces around the house. Um, and so my start at a butterfly wall is hung up now. Um, anyway, that's all to say. This is another finish that I had. Um, I'm calling it Brown and Yellow Moth. I'm not sure it has an official name. It's from Crystal Feather Crafts. Um, I'll give you a little closer view. I really like this one. I like the colors. Um, these are always easy, like, projects to stitch. I usually have them on my on the bus um, as my commute project. This one is 2,454 stitches, one over one on 25 count Lugana white even weave. Um, all of my, so like the mini art patterns, all of my butterflies are going one over one on 25 count and then finished in hoops so that they all kind of have the same appearance and they kind of match. Um, this one took me 12 days. I started on October 8th and finished it on October 26th. Um, and I haven't put it in a hoop yet. I think I couldn't decide between two different hoop sizes. You can kind of see like the edge of my hoop mark. I was like, maybe I should go a little smaller, but then the wings were kind of close to the edge. So I think I decided to go with a bigger hoop, but then I just never <laughs> actually finished it. So I should really throw that in that hoop and, and actually fully finish it and put it up on my wall now. Oh, right. And then I had a kind of an unplanned start and finish. This was not like a whip go call or anything like that, but I think I finished all of my whip go calls kind of ahead of time. 
Um, and I was looking for another project to start, so I picked this one because it was around Halloween and I had just purchased it um, as part of one of those. Etsy was doing those sales where it was like, if you spend $40, Etsy will give you $10 off, but it comes out of like Etsy, not out of the um, seller's uh, pockets. And so I bought quite a few patterns um, in one of those sales, and this was one of them. So this is called Enchanted Forest 3. Um, it's part of a three-part series, but I chose this one. I liked it the best. Um, this is by Una Buena Pieza. Um, and it is on 18 count black Ada. I did everything in DMC, called for colors, and uh, two over one full cross. My favorite, 18 count, two over one full cross. This is 3,186 stitches. Um, it took me, oh, I don't even actually know. Let's see, I can figure that out pretty quickly. 15 days to finish this one. And I started it on October 30th, right before Halloween, um, which is kind of why I picked it to start. I thought it was a little Halloween-y. I don't do a lot of like holiday themed stitching. Um, and so this was like one of the only ones. Here, let me give you a little bit of a closer look. I'll put my head behind it so there's less, <laughs> less reflection. Um, yeah. And I, I started this yeah on October 30th, finished it on November 20th. Um, I really like how it turned out. I think this one deserves a frame. It's another one that won't finish in a hoop very well. Maybe a flat fold, maybe a frame. I'm not 100% sure yet, but I think it's really cute. Um, I think it's, I like that it's subtle. Um, and a lot of Una Buena Pieza's pieces are subtle. Like, a lot of them have these little ghosties in them, but they aren't, like, in-your-face Halloween or in-your-face, like, spooky alternative goth whatever not that those patterns are bad they're just not necessarily always my style and so i don't often gravitate towards them but i thought this one was really cute um yeah so whew, that is all the finishes <laughs> um quite a few which i'm really happy about um i do wish i had spent some more time fully finishing some of them but i'll get there eventually so uh that's all good um, I don't have too many whips to show you, um, and actually, I'm realizing now that one of them is downstairs, so I'm gonna have to go get that. Okay, I have all my whips now. Um, I only have two whips to show you right now. I actually only have three whips in total. One of them I haven't worked on for a while, but we'll work on next month. So, this is two out of three of my current whips. And one is small, one is big. You've seen several times if you've been here before. So I'll show you the small one first. Um, this is called Carnivorous Terrarium by Lola Crow Cross Stitch. And it's so cute. So I recently started this one. Let's see. I have the information in here somewhere. I started this one on November 20th, so just a few days ago. I think I'm something like 67% complete. Um, I didn't update my spreadsheet before, so I don't actually know for sure, but I'm pretty, there's a like, you know, fill in down here and finishing up some of these plants, but um, not too much actually left. I think it's like 500 stitches or less. Um, so I will definitely finish this one before the end of the month. Um, I am stitching this one on some really beautiful blue fabric, and if you've been here for a while, you know that I don't stitch on, like, fancy, over-dyed, like, hand-dyed fabric very often, so this is kind of a treat. Um, when I bought this pattern, this is from Lola Crow, um, she had stitched it on this, like, light bluish green color and I thought it was beautiful and I was like I can't just stitch this on white now because that looks way too nice also um like the wings of some of the insects wouldn't show up very well on white so I looked for a blue fabric and I had to order some other fabric um like some new black ada and stuff from 123 stitch anyway and so I found this one which I absolutely think is beautiful and it is 
picture this plus Nessie. Um, and then I got it in 36 count Edinburgh linen. Um, I am stitching this two over two full cross. So the 18 count that I love. Um, and I think it is so cute. Um, so Lola Crow releases these little minis typically after, um, she does like a big mystery sow. Uh, and the, the first one, so when she did the haunted library, she released the book cage, which I also stitched. Um, and then most recently, I think it was the, oh, it was a big greenhouse. Oh, greenhouse of oddities. Um, the greenhouse of oddities sow, and then she released carnivorous terrarium as a miniature after that. Um, I don't typically do mystery sows because I'm very particular about my cross stitch and I want to know that I'm going to like the finished piece before I start it. Um, both the um, Haunted Library and the Greenhouse of Oddities are absolutely beautiful pieces. They're incredibly well designed. The colors are great. The amount of dimension that Lola Crow is able to get in two small spaces absolutely blows my mind. Um, <clears throat> but the smaller pieces are more my style. Um, and so I thought that I would just continue stitching these little minis as they come out. And I think they would be cute together. Um, I think like the general vibe of this kind of matches the general vibe of the book cage. I also did that one on like a hand dyed kind of like a beige fabric. So I think doing these on like kind of more special fabrics and then maybe displaying them together would be really cute. So um, I'm really happy with this one. I will probably have it finished in a couple days. Um, and I will probably finish it as a flat fold because that's what I did with the other one. And then, um, the big whip, which you might have seen before. One moment. Oh, I also forgot that I have all this magic that I set up. So, uh, carnivorous terrarium, this is what the finished piece looks like. Um, so yeah, just have to fill in some more of those plants and stuff. Um, and kind of like the back of the terrarium like the shadow part I haven't done yet. So you can see kind of how much more I have to do. Okay. And then um, the next piece is called Hidden Harbor um, by Heaven and Earth Designs. I'm doing the color expansion because I'm gonna do a piece by hand like this that's this big. Um, and my goal was to own the entire DMC color range anyway. I was like, what the heck, might as well do it. Um, when I spent a lot of time debating between the color expansion and the normal. Um, and I noticed that the color expansion colors seemed more vibrant. So I went with that. Because it's a really colorful piece, you might as well lean into it. So that is the mock-up of the finished Hidden Harbor piece. It's 135,000 stitches or so in total. Um, and I had put this piece on, I started it this year, I have the exact date, I'm sure. I started it on January 2nd, 2023, it is 135,150 stitches, and my goal for this year was to get to 25% complete by the end of the year. Um, and I kind of chunked that out so that it was more manageable by putting it on my Whipco board five times for 5% each time. Um, and my last 5% to get to 25% um, was called for November. And I actually already, I already hit 25%. Um, so I'm really excited. I'm going to show you what it looks like 25% complete. Um, <clears throat> this is probably then going away for the rest of the year. I just really don't want to get burnt out on it. So I'm trying to pace myself. And I figure for such a big piece, finishing it 25% a year for four years seems pretty reasonable. Um, so that's kind of what I'm planning right now. So first I want to show you, here's what it looked like last time. And I know this is like not the best picture. It's a screen grab from my last video where I showed it. Um, this was around 20% complete. I think probably less than that. <clears throat> and then here's what it looks like now. Let's see. I don't think I can show them both at the same time. Well, maybe I can. Yeah. So here's what it looks like now. Okay, and then I'm just gonna 
get rid of that overlay and show you all on its own. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's turning out so good. I really like how it looks so far. Um, I kind of, I feel like I cheated a little bit. It's not actually cheating, but the reason I think I was able to get done with my 25% goal so quickly is because I did some of these hills where there's a lot of one color, which was a really nice break also. <laughs> um, there are some really high confetti areas. I think <clears throat> when I pick this up again, my goal is going to be to fill in this top area above this hill um, so that that is kind of complete. I'm kind of separating it by areas like I did the sky first and then I did the mountains and then I did this hill section with the cliffs and now I'm kind of trying to fill in the tops of the hills then I'll probably come down and do more of this area maybe work on these houses basically I'm trying to fill out the Q snap as much as I can how it is um, and then I'll kind of shift it around because there's like I'm not sure where this center point was. I feel like it was maybe somewhere around here. So there's a little bit more down here and the center point for this side. Also not sure, but there's more at the bottom as well. So this is not the full piece. Um, so you can tell by my extra fabric. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, um, I really like how this is turning out. I'm really enjoying stitching it. I'm doing this two over one half stitch on 25 count Easy Grid Lugana. I'll give you as close up as I can so you can see how the half stitch looks. Hopefully that's focusing all right. I think it looks really good. I'm happy with it. Um, it's so, so much faster than doing it full cross would be. <clears throat> anyway, there's a little bit of a close up. Hopefully it looks all right. So yeah, right now I'm at 33 1,865 stitches completed, which is 25.06%. Um, and I'm really, really happy with that for this year. <clears throat> I also have like kind of switched back and forth how I am tackling this um, this year. So with the sky, it was really easy to do like one color and kind of like do a big chunk and then next color and do a big chunk, that kind of stuff. When I started get, getting into the more confetti heavy areas, sometimes I would start a bunch of colors and park them. Um, and then I would work all of those in. Um, more recently, what I've been doing is like picking a color, like let's say this yellow-ish color and stitching all of the yellow that's within this area that I can reach. So that was kind of how I tackled the last amount. Um, and so basically what I was doing is like, picking an area I wanted to finish, choosing those colors, stitching them all over instead of just in that section, which is probably what I'll do when I'll come up here. So I'll like, let's say pick whatever color that square is. And I will not only fill in this area, but I will also fill it in wherever it is in the rest of the area I can see as well. So it's kind of like, kind of cross country. I don't know, I'm just playing with it. Whatever um, makes it less monotonous for me at the moment. Um, is what I will do, and I think it's totally fine to switch up the way you do it, do it, of, like, the technique you use over time. Um, so yeah, I also changed from, like, parking ends of threads and just leaving them loose to pin stitching the ends so that I, there weren't a bunch of tails in the way, so I have lots of little, like, pin stitches in here, um, which has been working well for me as well. So, yeah, that is my progress on Hidden Harbor. Um... Very happy with it. Probably won't see it again until like sometime in 2024. I don't know if it'll be January, but sometime in 2024. So, you know, I'm all about the statistics. And since it's been a while, I have many months of statistics to show you. Um, so, yeah, let me show you those now. So first I have like what I worked on each month um, in digital form instead of me holding up my little notebook this time. Um, so yeah, you can see I touched a lot of projects in September, which was great. 
that was when I got a lot of these small finishes done and I stitched every single day of September. I didn't have any non-stitchy days, which was the first time this year that I had a month where I didn't miss a single day of stitching. Um, so that was, that was pretty cool. Um, then in October, I only did three different projects. Um, and it was a really slow stitching month for me. I had several non-stitchy days, a lot actually. <laughs> There's like 10, something like that, nine or 10. Um, which happens. This was a really low number of total stitches as well for me that month. Um, and then November so far, only one day that I haven't stitched. Um, and I've only touched three projects, but I made so much progress on Hidden Harbor that I actually have a pretty high stitch count for the month so far. So I'll show you those. Um, so you can see um, September. Ooh, it's really hard to point to something that doesn't exist in the physical world. Um, September, I had almost 14,000 stitches in a month, which was an all-time high for me this year. Um, October, it was super low, under 4,000. Um, and then November has been pretty productive so far. Um, almost 10,000 stitches, which I'll probably hit 10,000 by the end of the month since we still have a few days. Um, so yeah, you know, things come and go. Um, you can see my trend for the whole year. Some months are high, some months are low. Sometimes they kind of dip and come back up. Um, and then cumulatively for the year where I'm adding each month as we go, I have gotten to over 90,000 stitches. So well on my way to my goal for the year, which is to stitch 100,000 stitches within the year. Um, and I am pretty confident that I will hit that goal um, looking at the statistics now. So I have, um, I have stitched 93,400 stitches. So I just need to stitch 6,600 in December, well, in the rest of November and December to hit 100,000 for the year which I think is doable, especially because I will have some time off in December um, and be doing some traveling. So I'll be stitching on the planes, things like that. Um, so I think that will bring me to my goal. All right. So I think that's all the statistics that I have for now. Oh, wait, wait, I do have some other things. Forgot about this. So, um, some interesting statistics, in my opinion. Um, so far this year, I have had 33 days that I haven't stitched at all, which is currently just under 10% of the days this year. So 10% of days I don't cross stitch, um, which is actually, I think, less than I thought. Um, I'm kind of surprised that it's only 10%, and I think that's pretty cool to know. And then the other thing is that recently my whip count has been pretty low. So like in September, I had four finishes and I let, I ended the month with only three whips. In October, I had two finishes and I ended the month with only three whips <laughs> again. Um, this month, I'm set up to have, um, let's see, yeah, two finishes again and probably will end the month with three whips. So it's kind of... Three whips is, I guess, my sweet spot right now. Not sure why. Um, yeah, okay. I think that's all the statistics then. Um, for a few plans, um, I am caught up on my whip go, which is really exciting. Carnivorous Terrarium was one of my calls for this month. Um, I think I switched it out for something else that I wasn't in the mood for stitching. And honestly, you know, it's your board, your choice. <laughs> as I think what Jesse Marie says. So um, I'm pretty happy that I'm all caught up on caught up on Whipco because I was falling behind on Hidden Harbor for a while and I was a little afraid that I wasn't going to hit my 25% goal, but I did. Um, so I just, I'll finish Carnivorous Terrarium on time. I'll be all caught up at the end of this month. And then next month, um, my, since we already know the December calls because there are the only two squares left open, um, I think I have one mini art pattern that was called, so that'll be an, an easy finish because they're not very big. And then the other call, of course, now that I'm filming, I'm immediately forgetting. So let me just open that up real quick. 
Uh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. So the other one, really, really excited for. I didn't realize it was gonna be this long for it to be called again, but it is to finish the Unexpected Visitors piece, which is a um, Night Spirit Studios piece, I believe. Um, and I started it like, it, I put it on my Whipco board to be a start and finish within the year. Um, so I started it, the first time it was called was for February. I started on January 30th um, and I worked on it to 50%, I think. And then the last 50% is for December. So really called on both ends of the year. It's just been sitting in my closet for so long, calling my name. Um, but maybe, I think it kind of was like, the perfect time for it to get called both times because it feels like a wintry piece. Um, of course, I don't have a picture of it. Let me get a picture of it. That is what unexpected visitors looks like finished. Um, I mostly have a lot of border left. I finished a lot of the inside. I think maybe even all of the inside, but the border is dense. Um, and it is gorgeous. It's going to be 110% worth it. Um, so I have a lot of border stitching to do, but yeah, it feels like it'll be a really good piece for December. So I'm happy that it got called when it did, even though it's been so long since I've gotten to work on it and I really do like stitching on it. So that will be December, um, at least one mini art piece, finishing unexpected visitors. Um, for the rest of November, since I'm going to finish Carnivorous Terrarium soon, I might also start another pattern um, called Starry Night Cat. This was on my... there we go. This was on my Whipco board, and then when it got called, I was like, I really can't do that right now. <laughs> um, and I didn't think I would get to it this year, but I think I'm going to have time now, so I will probably start that in the next couple days, and then I will probably finish it in December since I am anticipating that um, the two whip go calls might not be enough stitching to get me through the whole month. So those are my thoughts on plans, but who knows, they might change. Um, oh, also I have messed around with this a little bit and I haven't finalized it yet, but for this piece. So my boyfriend and I have a cat. Well, it was his cat, but you know, we all live together now. So it's kind of like my step cat. Um, anyway, um, our cat's name is Nugget and he has an orange cat. So I have big plans to switch this, uh, switch the colors out in this pattern to make the cat an orange cat. Um, and then also on top of that, I was kind of like, I don't know if I want an orange cat on a red windowsill. Like, I don't know if the contrast will be as nice as like how it is in this. So I'm, I'm toying with also changing out the color of the windowsill, but I can't, I haven't figured out what would look best. I was like, maybe um, like a light yellow, which would kind of like pull in the starry night part. Um, maybe like a light, light blue, like almost white blue. Um, maybe just like a white in general, maybe a light brown, maybe a darker brown to be more like wood. <laughs> I have no idea. So if you have thoughts or even a specific DMZ color that you think would look really good, on the windowsill for this, let me know. Ooh, also, hmm, I'm realizing that I think I don't have that many overdyed flosses, like variegated overdyed cottons or silks or anything, but I have a couple that are left over from, um, uh, Rolodex Morning Sampler, which is a Michelle Bunny stitchy design where I like splurged on the I splurged on the overdyes, and there's a couple of browns in there that might look really good for the windowsill, actually. Huh. I'll have to look at those. I'll have to look at those right after I finish filming, because now that's going to be on my mind. Okay, so those are my plans. I've had a few purchases since, you know, a few months ago. <laughs> um, one was that blue fabric, which I think I'm really happy that I got. Um, I got some other fabric, just like boring restocking and stuff, like more 18 count black Ada and more white Ada and more white Lugana, but n nothing like really fancy or worth showing, I don't think. Um, I got several patterns, which I kind of alluded to. Um, they, when Etsy did that sale, I 
a bunch of patterns, mostly a bunch of um, butterfly patterns for my butterfly wall because they were already like relatively cheap. Um, so I was able to get like a, what felt like a lot of bang for my buck. Um, I also bought a Hardanger pattern. Um, Hardanger is something that I haven't really done much of, but I, I toyed around with it like a few weeks ago, just like on a little sample piece. Um, and it seems kind of fun. So I might try that Hardanger piece sometime next year. What else did I get? Oh, I got the Una Buena piece, uh, Enchanted Forest piece that I showed you. Um, yeah, so that's that. I'm not going to show you all the butterfly pieces because it's a lot and I don't have them all open and you'll see them when you see them when I actually stitch them probably. The other purchase was a gift, um, part of my birthday gift from my parents slash dad. Um, not sure if it was specifically my dad or not, <laughs> but, um, these are so beautiful. They are Nerd Hoops, which you may or may not have heard of before, but Nerd is a UK company, I believe, um, that makes embroidery and other like quilting supplies. And they, they're really, I think, probably best known for their embroidery hoops, which are just such beautiful quality. I've seen so many people use these, especially like a couple of the UK stitchers that I follow. Um, like use them for everything and I'm so jealous because they're gorgeous. They're like so well made, um, like especially compared to like Michael's hoops, which is pretty much what I use for everything because it's budget friendly. It's easy for me to get them. Um, yeah, it's really like the only hoops that I can get easily. Um, so I just kind of settle for that. Um, so if you bought like hoops from Michaels or Joann's or wherever, you probably have noticed that they don't always match up perfectly on sides. Like sometimes there are some gaps between the inner and outer hoop and that can be really annoying for tension. Um, yeah, <laughs> it can be annoying for tension. These ones are so nicely made. They fit so snugly. The wood is super solid. I think it's beech wood instead of bamboo, which is what the Michaels hoops are made of. And I got um, Nerd cells, like not only different sizes, like circumference or diameters, um, they also sell different hoop thicknesses. Um, so this is the medium size. It's like maybe half an inch thick. And they have the smaller size, which is more similar to the Michaels hoops um, width. And then they have one that's even thicker than this. Um, that's like, I think an inch wide or something like that, which is also really nice. I think like having the kind of thicker hoop gives like a more um, fancier look. I don't know. Um, it's just like more professional maybe. And then the other really nice thing is it has this brass closure, which one, I think the brass looks really pretty compared to like the more silverish metal that is on the Michaels hoops pointing over there. <laughs> um, but the nice thing about these also is, I don't know if you'll be able to see, the hoop closure, there you go, has um, like a notch in it so that you can use a screwdriver to tighten it, which means that you can get it really, really, really tight and you can get a really nice drum tight fabric. Um, so I haven't tried these yet. I know they're going to be so good. Um, I have plans for what I'm going to put in them, um, which I'm not going to talk about now. Um, actually, neither of them are cross-stitched. <laughs> One of them is a black work project from Purple Rose Embroidery. I lied. I am going to talk about them. One is a black work project from Purple Rose Embroidery that's like a really beautiful, colorful sunset with different black work patterns for the different parts. It's gorgeous. I haven't done black work for a really long time. Um, so I thought it would be fun to have another Blackwood project. Although I don't have like specific plans for when I'm going to start that. I think, you know, sometime next year. The other one, um, I have plans to do one of, um, Vika Spaces, um, like mountain patterns. It's called Yosemite Valley. It's basically, um, it's the same style as this. So th these are also patterns from Vika. Um, her Etsy shop is called Vika Space. Um, and they're really gorgeous patterns. Um, and so one of these is going to be for Yosemite Valley, um, which is one of her patterns. But I don't have plans on when exactly I'm going to start either of those yet. Um, like I said earlier, I was going to show you 
um, some of the cross stitch that I put up around the house. Um, so some of it is right behind me actually, and I'll show pictures as well that are a little closer up, but I hung up my banana leaf cross stitch. Yes, that is a full coverage, not a heaven and earth design, but you know, same vibes. Banana leaf there next to my desk. And then here I started my mini art gallery. You can also see, oh, wrong way. Um, I've hung up some, or I've just kind of set some of my hoops up on the shelves. And then I've hung up my, gosh, I can't point to the right side to save my life. Um, I've hung up some of my Vegas base patterns I, I, that I finished together as a trio over here um, to kind of fill up the wall. Um, so I'm really, really happy to have those on my wall. I'll show you a couple close-ups. Let's see. Um, there is the banana leaf one sitting kind of to the left of my monitor. Um, and then that is what the little art gallery looks like so far. So you can actually see the ones I've hung up. I tried to alternate the frame color so it didn't look like super random. Um, I thought about putting all of them in the same color frame so that they all matched, but um, I had already had them in whatever frame I thought looked best, so I kind of wanted to keep it that way. Yep, and then over here, you can see those basically as well as you can see them in the video. Um, yeah, so the whole desk area looks really cute. Um, it's kind of funny to show a picture over like basically the background you're seeing, but yeah, anyway. Um, that's where I put up a lot of the things. And then the other things um, in our bedroom on our dresser, I put up a Lola Crow design, um, which is the mushrooms. It's called Mushrooms at Night, I think, or Moonlight Mushrooms. I uh, can't remember which, um, but it's a Lola Crow pattern. It's really beautiful. I know this picture isn't really doing them justice. Um, and then I put up my trio frame with my botany series in it. Um, if you haven't checked out my botany series patterns, um, you should check out my Etsy if they interest you. They're kind of nerdy um, cross stitch chemistry overlap um, with, you know, plants and stuff like that. And then in our living room, we have these shelves above the couch and I put up my Rolodex morning sampler over there <laughs> where my hand is um, just at the very top uh, so it's nice to have that one up and then last but not least in my cross stitching setup which is just in the closet over here um, there's a closet in the office one half of it has my cross stitching stuff on it um, so I have like a shelf underneath where I keep all of my uh, like underneath that top shelf that you see I have a whole square it's like a calyx from Ikea and then above the floss I started my butterfly wall so it's inside of a closet it doesn't get seen too often um, but that's okay by me I don't have a lot of them finished yet so there wasn't really a good space anywhere else in the house like either the walls felt like, oh, this is going to be too small for like what I want it to be in the end. Or right now it's going to look silly because there's not enough to fill out a big space. So I thought this was a good in-between space. I'll kind of fill up the closet area. I'll get to see them when I'm getting up projects and stuff like that. And then one day when I have a bunch um, and they can kind of fill up a bigger wall, then I'll get to put them there. And I think that will be nice. So yeah, that's some of the art or some of the cross stitch that I've gotten to hang up around the house, um, which I really like. And that now is officially all of the cross stitching talk. Um, I have a few life updates. Well, that's a lie. I have many a life updates of many cool things that I've gotten to do in the last like three or so months, but it's honestly too much to cover it all. So I'll give you a few highlights. Um, way back in September, I believe, um, my best friend Ariana and I, um, anyway, uh, so <laughs> Ariana is also a PhD student in my program. Um, we went on a little girls trip up to Bellingham, which is like an hour and a half north of Seattle. Um, it's a cute little town and we spent a weekend. We actually stayed in this Airbnb, which was like a, in a barn. Like it was the top floor of a barn. Um, and it had like a little loft and everything. It was so cute. And like, 
just like old school, really cute. Um, and we just enjoyed the town, wandered around, shopped, um, went and enjoyed the water, like walking along the beach, um, ate good food. It was very nice. Um, it was a really good trip. Um, Ariana also has a YouTube channel, um, which is relevant to the next point, which is we went to a book sale together. Um, Ariana has a YouTube channel called Ariana Fry Reads, which I will link in the description below if you want to check it out. If you're into book stuff, um, I have been reading more lately, but not, um, I haven't talked about it. I know a lot of floss tubers talk about like books at the end of their floss tube. I haven't gotten there yet. Um, most because I don't necessarily have that much to say. Um, but Ariana has a whole channel about this that she's started recently. So definitely go check her out if you want like book recommendations and stuff. Um, I got most of my recommendations for what to read from her. Um, so she also has been scoping out a bunch of library book sales that happen around the Seattle area, which is basically like libraries get a bunch of do books donated to them. And then on some like random Saturday, they put them all out in a big area and you can just go walk around and find lots of really good finds. Um, and they're typically selling them for like a dollar a book or something. And so we went to a book sale a little bit north of here. Um, and I think I found like seven books for $7. It was amazing. Um, and so I've been slowly working my way through those. I listened to a lot of audiobooks, but I don't read physical books very quickly so I haven't gotten through all of them yet but um it was it's really fun to go like find these gems among a bunch of books uh, like books you know that are on your list or um, um books you really like that I'm not the kind of person who's gonna spend like $15 on a book um to buy it new and read it I'm more of a library girl <laughs> um so if I find a book I love and it's a dollar then I'll get it and it'll go on my collection, but um, I'm not going to buy like brand new books unless I have a gift card or something that I can't use anywhere else. Um, our department at UW, um, for UW Bioengineering, had a nice retreat. Our, um, all the grad students plan, well, some of the grad students plan a retreat for all of the grad students each year where we get to go out to like a like a park, not a park, I don't know what the word is, a campground that has like a retreat center and then we stay in the retreat center like in the cabins and we use their big like kitchen and everything. It's always really fun. Um, so that was enjoyable. Also STEM Pals, the um, outreach organization that I run um, with other grad students at UW, we had our a, a really big um, event that we called STEM Expo at UW recently um, where we had like 60 or 80 high school students come for a day on a Saturday and um, got to see a bunch of different like aspects of STEM at UW. Um, so, you know, bioengineering and chemistry and computer science and earth and space science and environmental engineering, like all kinds of things. So that was really fun and really successful. It's a big event that we had been planning for like over six months. Um, so that was a relief to have done and also um, really fun to do. I am also taking a class um, about teaching. I'm taking a class about teaching, which I always have a hard time <laughs> describing to people for some reason. Um, it's basically a class on how to teach most effectively based off of like research that people have done on how to teach. So it's kind of, um, you know, got aspects of active learning and how to design a class and how to write a syllabus and how to create assignments and how to get your students like engaged with what you're teaching. And the really cool part about this class is that we're learning all of this and we're, the assignments for the course are scaffolded um, to help us um, like kind of design different parts of our own course. Um, and then I actually get to teach the class that I'm designing. So I have a, um, like a partner in the class that I'm working with and we're designing a course that will be offered in the spring at UW, um, uh, that we'll be teaching. I don't know. It's, it's really exciting. Um, I'm really excited about the idea of 
teaching at the college level of postgrad. Um, and this was just, it's such a cool opportunity to get to, to spend so much time thinking about how to teach well and getting the opportunity to like design and then be the instructor for a course myself. So I'm very, very excited about that. I'm very thankful for that opportunity. Um, and then the last like fun thing, um, last week, last weekend, um, depending on when I post this two weekends ago, I um, went home with my partner to um, a, a family friend's wedding, which was very exciting. Um, and it was nice to see a bunch of, um, to see my family and also their family and, you know, celebrate celebrate them and, and spend a fun night um, with a bunch of people. So that was really nice. Um, it's kind of crazy to travel like the week before Thanksgiving, so I didn't actually end up traveling for Thanksgiving, um, but I'll be traveling again for Christmas. So yeah, those are just a few life updates. Um, and hopefully I will see you again sooner than I did last time. I won't make any promises um, for sure, but I have the best intentions of filming a video sometime um, at the very end of December or very beginning of January. Um, that will be, well, okay. I would say it would be a whip parade, except for, here's the thing. I only really ever have like three whips at a time. Um, so unlike all of those awesome people that I love watching who have whip parades where they're showing you 20 or 30 or 40 plus projects, um, I don't think my whip parade would be that exciting. So I'm not going to do a whip parade. Um, but what I will do is a finish and whip parade where I show you everything I finished this year and my current whips um, so that there's actually more to see. And this year so far, just to give a little teaser, um, I have... I have 22 finishes so far this year, so there will be some things to see in that. Um, so it'll be a finish and with parade in one, um, and then either in that video or in a different video, I'm not sure yet, I will do a whip go planning video. So I need to put together my whip go board. Yeah, I need to put together my whip go board for 2024. Um, and I thought it would be fun to like show you how I do that um, and kind of like talk through my thought process as I do that and share that with you guys. So um, I hope you look forward to those videos and until then, um, have a lovely rest of your November. Um, happy holidays. I hope you get to rest some um, in December and that you get to enjoy the end of this year and ring in the next one. Um, and I hope to see you sometime towards the end of this year or early next year. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.